Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over how to farm various monster parts and other useful material for upgrading weapons and other similar things in late game in Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. This video will also indirectly be a little bit of a guide on how sensor registered material drop rate works as this is a very useful mechanic for uh, farming uh, various monster parts and other useful material that are required for uh, weapon upgrades. Uh, this video will contain some spoilers as far as some endgame content content, some endgame characters and stuff like that, so if you haven't finished out the main uh, storyline, uh, do be warned. Otherwise, uh, let's get into it. So, uh, of course, uh, main thing we're going to want is just either a good weapon or uh, something with a bunch of sensor registered material drop rate. The specific location that we are going to be doing it on is the Battle of Hyrule Field, specifically on a Blood Moon. However, it doesn't have to be a Blood Moon, but if you're going to be doing it, you might as well be getting good weapons while doing so, uh, just so you're not wasting as much time, so you can both farm a bunch of monster parts and you would also be able to get all the... Uh, good weapons and all the other benefits of a blood moon like finding jewels and uh stuff like that as far as excess monster parts they are used primarily for a few things uh the main one and probably the reason why you want to know how to farm monster parts which is of course to uh raise up uh, level weapon caps and stuff like that uh these will uh, of course uh, cost a bunch of various material and uses almost every single one uh, throughout the game and most of them can be obtained from hyrule field uh oddly enough as far as uh, removing seals and all the other costs for uh other similar things like that if we want to like remove all it ends up taking a bunch of uh, apples which uh, you just get it from bananas that's enough uh just from the Ika clan uh but you can get the mushrooms from hyrule field you can get the meat from hyrule field you can get the monster parts from hyrule field you can get the monster gills from hyrule field so it covers a very very wide range pretty much all of them uh, for the most part except the bananas which as long as you don't convert them for a thousand um for a thousand rupees ever other than the very first time you should pretty much have enough bananas always to uh do that uh, as far as excess monster parts, uh, one pretty useful thing that you can also use for them is for the uh, potions over here. Uh, they are a good end game uh, potion that's used for some really good end game food that you get after completing out uh, the game. Uh, one other thing to note is if you happen to have the slightly rare shop, I think we have it right now. Um, this one right over here, the one that sells the ancient parts. Uh, if you go to this shop and click on sell, this guy has 2.5 times multiplier for all of the uh, monster parts. So some monster parts that sell for more, you generally want to sell here rather than using them for the thing. So these are the two main ones you want to keep these two and these two. Uh, the rest of them you can kind of just sell. So for example, all these hearts, uh, we can literally just sell all of them and boom, we get a bunch of rupees for it and we'll easily be able to get more as you're about to see. So um, if you ever get excess of any of these, instead of letting it auto sell for the normal one times, you can come over here and get a 2.5 times value from it, which is pretty useful. Anyways, let's go and get into the actual level itself and show um, the farming of it. So this does require using Revali. However, your second character can pretty much be anything uh, else. As far as what you want to set for cooking, um, you can, if it's a Blood Moon, set to Rare Material and then do Material Drop Rate and Material Drop Rate. However, for the sake of this video, since it is primarily focused on uh, farming monster parts and the such, we will just simply go three uh, Material Drop Rates um, and then we'll be uh, good to go. And we'll just go confirm that. And uh, lastly, we need to go set our sensor. So as far as the sensor, if you go click onto the pause menu and then click over to left to get to your material, you can see over there, there's a Sheikah sensor. By end game, you end up having 10 uh, possible sensors that you can end up using, and you can set this to absolutely anything. So right here, we're going to want to, I'll show basically the standard one that you're gonna to wanna to do, and then I'll kind of just adjust it based on the material that I currently have. So you're gonna to want to go for the mushroom, you're gonna to wanna to go for the uh, meat, you're gonna to wanna to go for the fish, you're going to want to have to go for the uh, flint if you're low on that. Uh, you're going to want to go for the main three uh, monster parts right there. And uh, similarly, the main three monster parts over here. And that's pretty much what you would end up setting your sensor to. Uh, one pretty nice thing about the sensor, aside from the fact that it has higher percents than most of the other things that give drop rate, you can set it to a mix of everything. So as you can see here, we have it to a mix of battlefield as well as to specific monster parts that we're going to be killing a lot of. However, I don't necessarily need all of these drops. For example, I have kind of have too many of the mushroom, too many of the fish, and too many of the flint though i do need more meat so i can kind of get rid of those and add other things but since we got rid of three we can go for all the moblin ones if we want to we could end up going for jewels since we are doing on a blood moon right now so we could try doing that to go get jewels to sell though for the simple uh, sake of it since we're kind of focusing on monster parts i'll simply just go all in on the monster parts then and uh, there we go we have our sensor uh, set up we'll now get more additional meat we'll now get more uh things from all the uh bokoblins we'll then get it from the moblins and we'll get it from the Zalfos. so uh that's pretty much every single thing on this uh, stage it's of uh, uh, relevance so i'll we'll pretty much be uh, good to go then and uh, that will now increase the rate based on whatever our percent is on the, our main character that we are using 
Uh, you could use it on both characters if you want, however, I believe it only affects the active character from what I've seen, so it doesn't really matter too much since the second character is going to be doing very little. You mostly just want them to clean up very quickly. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, we're going to be getting, uh, what's the math on that, 51%? Did I do math wrong? I think that's correct. 51% additional drop rate on top of the fact that we're getting 45% additional uh, drop rate. And then we just head in, and I'll just kind of show the pathing for this. Obviously, it's a pretty straightforward map, but... Uh, We'll still go show the mapping, and you can see every single thing on the map uh, all censored up. Generally, you'll want to deactivate your sensor after doing a level, or if you're about to farm another level, redo the sensor. Or if you're just farming the same level, you don't even need to uh, do it. Of course, you don't have to do this on a Blood Moon. You can simply just do the normal stage and just keep doing it over and over again until you have more than enough monster parts and everything else that you ever need for crafting uh, weapons. And then just sell off the uh, excess that you have for a bunch of uh, rupees, and uh, then go from there. Uh, also, you will notice that we're about to lag extremely, extremely hard. I'm pretty sure many of you, this is kind of notorious stage for lag. However, we are about to step that up at least like 10 degrees <laughs> with about how much lag we're about to have due to, um, uh, due to, well, you'll, you'll see in a moment <laughs> how many drops we get will uh, kind of almost crash the game. I think we go down to like five frames per second at times. So uh, we're just going to want to go into flight with Revali. We're going to want to stay in flight for most of the time. But uh, we're going to want to go kill pretty much everything in front of us. You'll notice as we kill things that uh, we're going to end up getting like a ridiculously high amount of uh, bags going on. So um, it's going to start lagging. And the frame rate will go down almost nothing because how many drops we get per second. This is... Oh gosh, it's so many. <laughs> so, so many. And of course, there's this mandatory cutscene, unfortunately, which slows it down a bit. There's actually a couple mandatory cutscenes during this uh, stage. Uh, however, it's still a really good stage to do it on due to the sheer amount of uh, uh, enemies that are on at this stage. Also, if you do it slightly too slow, you do miss out, I believe, on a couple of the kills here. Which I think we just did right there, but it's not too big of a deal. And then we can go ahead over here. And, oh, he also has a super slide. I did that in the wrong direction, though, so that's a bit of a fail. But, um... I angled that completely wrong, but uh, Revali does have a super slide. It's one of the other things that makes him pretty good for this. He actually has the single best uh, movement option in the game. If you do his 5Y into X, he has a very, very good uh, uh, slide, and you just use stasis at the right time, and you hold your momentum from his dive, which ends up working out very, very well. So let's throw a special on this guy that should end up killing him out, hopefully. A lot of these enemies, obviously, are very, very, very weak. So I'll end up killing this thing out. I think that's almost enough damage. Yeah, it should be enough. Even on Blood Moon, he still dies in one shot. This is the first level of the game, after all. So, obviously, they're pretty low durability. This weapon's not even maxed, but it's getting there. And, obviously, he's really good at taking outposts. Though, it still hurts when they're all over the place and don't want to spawn. And that should be dead. If not, we can just throw a few pokes on him, and that should be good to go. Looks like he does survive ever so slightly. We are doing on very hard. However, you can do it on whatever difficulty you want. Difficulty has no effect on this uh, whatsoever. So do be mindful of uh, that. And then we got our super slide. Once again, I did it slightly wrong angle, but we can make it work. And it'll just cancel out of it. One nice thing about the super slide, too, is you're still in flight the entire time, even though you're on the ground. It may look like you're on the ground, but you're actually in flight. So, um, yeah, it works out pretty nice because you don't need to re-go into flight, so you can constantly keep yourself in a flight state, which is pretty nice. Okay, so right now we're going to a mandatory cutscene. It actually drags you over to that location, so we can actually just go over here real quick. I'm not sure if I'll reach it in time. Uh, let's see. No, we didn't. I keep doing such bad angles. But, uh, oh no, I couldn't get the kills. Normally you can get those kills in time if you do it correctly. Oh, it's not too big a deal. But yeah, if you super slide over there, you can kind of go get those kills before the cutscene drags you over here. And then you're dragged over here regardless of where your location was prior. And then we go ahead over here and just keep killing everything. And as you can see, we're getting absurdly high amount. You can actually check over here with your spoilers just how many drops you're getting. And as you can see, uh, pretty good drops. Uh, and you can see uh, what you specifically have censored by whatever has the sensor marker on it. And you can see why I didn't censor stuff like this. We're already going to max out the fish. We're already going to max out on that. Pretty much going to max out everything but the meat. Uh, since you're already going to be getting such a substantial amount. Uh, meat's used for quite a few recipes and a few other things, which is why it gets eaten a little bit quicker than the uh, other material here. So if you're wondering why that one's so much lower. But uh, yeah, you get a bunch of monster parts and everything else. And it's not even over yet. Of course, we've still got like half the map to go. And it still gives a ton more uh, resources. But anyways, we'll go ahead over here. Uh, you don't want to super slide or anything over here. You want to go kill them all. Obviously, any area that is super dense with enemies, or even really any enemies at all, you generally want to stay around to go and uh, kill them. Also, this angle is so bad right now. You have to sometimes change his uh, Y angle thingy uh, in order to, or Z axis kind of thing, in order to uh, get it correctly. He's very weird sometimes with his uh, 
hitboxes. But uh, there we go. Grab our last little few kills here. Uh, we will go for those boxes, especially if you're on Blood Moons. It's worth going for them. There's only two of them on this course, however. It's still worth going for, especially on a Blood Moon. Even on a Blood Moon, it can sometimes give you some pretty good uh, material that you might want. So uh, definitely worth going for. Oh, where's our enemy? Oh, we'll bomb him. Why not? I've kind of been specialing all of them, but uh, we'll go for a bomb for once. And it should be enough to kill. Also, you may have noticed we've almost, like, never really touched the ground at all. <laughs> Other than, like, the times where it, like, forces you to the ground, like, now. We've pretty much never really touched it too much. That's ideally what you want to do more often, not with Revali. Aside from a couple of those combos that you kind of need to, particularly when you're fighting a bigger enemy. But if you're just fight fighting a bunch of smaller stuff, you uh, pretty much ideally never want to touch the ground. Or at least as minimally as possible. Also, things like this is nothing for Revali. Those little charging guys. And a uh, nice wide range like this ends up making clearing these out very, very quick, which is nice. Uh, unfortunately, when they don't spawn, <laughs> we can't really kill them. Come on, spawn. Where are you? There you go. Oh, there he is. Uh, let's go for the special. And that should hopefully drag him down to almost a dead. And then we just kill him out. Uh, where is he? There he is. And there we go. Okay. And soon we will gain control of our other character. Um, as I think I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can use absolutely anyone. It doesn't really matter too much who you end up uh, using. As long as they can clean up um, a wide area pretty quickly. So you might not necessarily want to use Impa or something like that. Even though she's an insanely good character. Uh, her starting from no special while doing it's a little bit more annoying. Compared to some characters that can have a better startup that don't necessarily need special. So, oops, uh, what am I doing? Uh, we actually gained control of Tiba, so we do want to go and bring him over there. Remember to go do that. Uh, you could theoretically kill all that if you really wanted to, but uh, normally not worth the time. Oops, I accidentally clicked the ZR. But I uh, want to go clear out uh, this area. Might even throw a special down. If you throw a special down at the right time, uh, you can actually have it so it kills out the camp and it kills everything else that's um, about to spawn. We're going to like a little mini boss thing. And uh, that should kill him out. And then we'll go to our valley to go head back there. We will skip over a few enemies that we could, of course, kill. Uh, they're normally work skipping over just because they might take a little bit too long. So we'll go and uh, switch over, have them go somewhere in that general area. And, and then we're going to want to use a 3Y into X and just sweep all these up. And then we're going to want to go a 5Y X. I did that slightly bad angle, but I think we got most of them. Yep, there we go. Okay, and sure, why not? We'll do that. And you should be dead. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, we're not even going to need the thing. I forgot we overkill. <laughs> this is a, this is the first course of the game after all. Uh, but normally you would need a 5Y into X and then you smash and put the X thing. Oh no, we just got hit out of the air. What are you doing, Fireworks Rope? You're in such a bad location right now. <laughs> you are in such a ridiculously bad location. Uh, there we go. Okay, that should be fine. Also, you have to come to the ground in order to take chest, by the way. If you're wondering why I keep coming down like this. Uh, would you like to take the chest, please? Hello. There you go. Okay, uh, let's see. We'll try taking this guy first. I normally like going for it just because of the things right over here. And there we go. And then we just lock on. We're actually going to be taking that camp, though. I'm just here to claim a very quick kill as we're heading over to that camp. Just because the firebox there is a little bit easier to take now than it is when we're uh, going the other way around. And uh, then we'll go take out this camp. Not necessarily needed, but you do get a bit more monster parts. And it's pretty quick to take with Ravali. Doesn't take that long at all. And he's using bomb. However, uh, this is a bomb arrow after all. So technically that counts. Though I really wish bomb arrows actually did count for bomb counter. They actually don't. Um, obviously you could still do that and that still breaks him. But uh, generally speaking, like all his other bomb moves don't actually count as bombs. Which is rather unfortunate. But uh, then we'll just kill out the other two. This would be a decent area to cry on this as well. I don't think we're really going to need it. I think we have enough special bar at this point. To just tear them apart that way. If we really need to. And that should be a dead. Oh, no, we didn't break all the way. Unfortunate. That should be good now. There we go. That's the break. And anyways, I have to go for the other one, and then we'll be good to go. I think we have special bar built up, and if not, our range ability will end up uh, bring, uh, bringing it up for us. Uh, oh, okay, good. We do still have it. Good. Perfect. And that should be match. And not quite a break, <laughs> ever so short. But uh, luckily we still have special, and it won't really matter. We get our poke, and then any poke afterwards should be the kill. We can just Y-spam him at this point. And there we go. And that's all you have to do. And from doing this, we get a ridiculous 
amount of monster parts. And it doesn't take that long either. Um, this stage is definitely done within under 10 minutes, even if you count all loading screens, all cutscenes, and all everything. Well, let's go see what our final loot is. And that's pretty much all you have to do. You just set a bunch of uh, material food. You set a bunch of sensors, assuming you have it. Otherwise, you just run any standard decent weapon. And you're pretty much good to go. Hey, six minutes on the dots. Of course, it's technically slightly more than six minutes, given uh, all the time that doesn't count. But as far as in-game time, six minutes on the dot. Hey, I needed that other sensor. Look at how convenient that is. I got the final sensor I've been looking for. I, I wanted to do, it do that before the video, but I just could not find it. And then it's like, oh, hey, have it during the video. That's pretty funny. Well, there you go. That's what you're looking for. Uh, you can get these pretty easily off of Blood Moons. Um, they're one of the main locations where you want to try farming them from. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Boom. <laughs> we got it. So that's rather convenient. And, uh, oh, attack speed plus plus. I was needing that on um, uh, Tebow 2. <laughs> wow, we just got um, in midair attack. Gosh, his best two modifiers. Wow, we just got showered with useful uh, useful stuff. And we got to use this weapon for Link. But uh, here's the final screen. Um, we got ourselves a bunch of meat. We got 91 meats. We got, uh, gosh, a lot of mushrooms. I didn't even put a sensor on mushroom. And we got more mushrooms somehow. Go figure. But, um... Yeah, we end up getting a lot of monster parts. We end up getting a lot of uh, everything. You just run this a couple times, you'll pretty much be good to go. Um, and it just gives a very wide range. And it goes pretty quick. Within a single hour, you'd probably max out every single... Or you definitely would. Within a single hour, you'd max out every single stack of... Um, or not every every single stack, but you know, the um, ones that end up accumulating more. Uh, particularly the Bacoblin stuff. You would easily max in under an hour uh, with this method. And then you could just go and upgrade all your weapons. Go and grab those uh, little potion things for end game uh, stuff. And uh, just kind of go from there. Ends up working out pretty good. That's all you got to do. Anyways, that'll wrap it up for this video. If you still have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I'll be covering plenty more guides on Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity as far as min-maxing stuff, just farming, and other various things. Hopefully, I'll be getting around to character guides soon. Still need to farm up a bit more weapons for a couple people. But uh, Ravali, uh, Tiba, and a few others... Um, Probably going to be covering a guide on at some point soon. Obviously, Link and Impa, they're so ridiculously broken and stuff like that. But uh, we will eventually be getting over to uh, character guides. But I do want to uh, kind of uh, focus on general stuff first before we really get into character guides. But we will be very soon. But anyways, guys, feel free to leave a like on the video. It helps out a lot. And I will catch you guys later. Feel free to subscribe for future content. Goodbye, everyone.